So I'm Felicia, and I'm the Editor-in-Chief at LA Yoga and Five Bliss Magazines, and we're honored to be able to participate in this screening and to have written about the film and Elizabeth. And one of the things that came up for me, so I'd love to ask the first question watching the film, is the integration of music, which I know is a large part of Swami Kriyananda's teachings and life at the various Ananda villages. So I would love the people involved in the film to speak a little bit about the use of the music in the film, because I think it also, and we all may have felt this, had a special tone of sweetness throughout the film. Did, it, did anybody experience that? Yes. Yes. Yeah, that, that vibration and feeling and sound of the music and the sweetness of the message really came through. So I would love to hear just something about the choice of using music in that way, maybe some of the songs that were chosen and how it expressed the message of the film. It was my sincere joy and honor to work with Swami Kriyananda's music for the past 12 years, quite a lot in depth. And in that time, I've discovered that, as I was saying in the film, there is something that lies beyond the notes this inspiration that can be so tangibly felt, and it's our job as performers, uh, there, it, whether we're performing at Sunday services or whether we're just getting together and singing, whether it's chanting before meditation, or tuning in to that inspiration, and just instead of just creating notes, to using the notes as a, a, a pathway to higher consciousness, and that's why Swami Kriyananda started composing music in the first place, was to offer assistance to to share his inspirations, to share his teachings through music. So it has a service base as its inspiration at its root. And that really, really comes across. So music is like our lifeblood at Ananda. Without it, we would fall into disarray quite easily. And the music in this film was such a joy to work with because it was my awesome, and I, I don't mean awesome, but it was just my, oh my gosh, how am I going to do this? How am I going to capture the feeling that is Ananda? Oftentimes you go to a movie and you'll be uh, brought to tears by Wilson, the volleyball drifting away from Tom Hanks and cast away. And I'm crying over a volleyball. The music will do that to you. And I want you to know that the music here in this film, the music that we've been living with, this, that is the vibration. There is that tangible vibration. So we use the music consciously in each of our colonies and what a tribute to this man, Swami Kriyananda, that he's, <coughs> the music is just one aspect of this many, many aspects of genius. So, thank you. I think it's nice to hear a little bit of the story behind the story sometimes too and and thinking it's a great gift and honor for all of us here being able to see the film tonight to have you know so many people involved with uh, the making of the film and the behind the scenes so if you could all stand up for a moment so we have Ted the director You were one of the producers as well as being interviewed in the film. And powerhouse. She was the powerhouse. <laughs> and then David, right? Yes. And we also got to see in the film and had a great you know, connection with the music. And I'm sure there are many of you in the audience, and it's great to see so many people stay for the Q&A, who have some questions. Is there anyone who have questions that have come up? Yes. Yeah, about the music, it, it's so sweet. And there was one moment when the fires came, there was a, a little bit of sadness I, I heard in the music track. In, in real life, we do have sadness. And I'm curious, how does the, how does music hold that sadness in the community, and and how do we transform through other emotions than bliss? So great question, and every everybody heard that. How does music also express the sadness, and how do we transform through emotions other than bliss? So can I just say one thing, and then I want to like let make you talk finish the quote. When we began taking Swami Kriyananda's music and putting it to the picture of the film. We had the full library of Swami's work. And 
I found that a lot of the music had that very quality, a little bit melancholic, a little, and maybe it's tenderness, is that kind of tone of the music. And, and it was one of our fears was how are we going to create music that would have all of the emotions that the movie needs to have. So now I'm going to pass it to you. And that subject is, could be covered in depth for quite a while. We could take a two hour course, which I don't think we have time for to do right now. But yes, how do we move through emotions? We can't just disregard them and say, oh no, I don't want to feel that. I'm supposed to feel bliss, because that sets up a, um, a, a falseness within ourselves. And it's not to, for music to dwell in that negative state of emotion, but to acknowledge it and then to lift it up. So yes, we don't have, we, we don't, all of our music isn't just light and joyful and, and, and blissful that way. There is music that helps get us going, that's, that can stir us to action or to bring us calmness or to express something like a tragedy does that leaves us in a, a state of catharsis that is healing to those emotions. So, but we do work a lot with overcoming negative emotions through the use of this music, kind of like antidotes, if you will. Does that answer your question? Somewhat, thank you. Okay. <laughs> I, every question and every answer just brings us to more questions and more reflection, doesn't it? You know, that's that's where the answers come through our reflection and our own practice. Yes. Um, I, I was moved by many things in the movie, but when um, Jack Nicholson was Yes, Swami Kriyananda passed away about a week after he saw the, uh, what we thought was the final version of this film. And he was in Italy at that time, I was with him at that time, and all of our community in Italy. And he was very happy with this film. He was moved to tears, and uh, he could hardly speak after seeing it. And he said, it's perfect. And Yogananda is very pleased with all of you. And I felt that uh, in that moment, he, something, something happened with him. And that uh, he, he saw that what his life had been dedicated to, the mission of his master, he had actually fulfilled and that he could go on. I expected that he was going to go on for several more years because we all thought that. But it was just about a week after that that, uh, that he passed away. He passed away very uh, quietly. It was early in the morning. It was about his uh, breakfast time. And uh, his health had been very challenging for a long time. Uh, many many things had happened. I'll just tell you a funny story. Once he he went to uh, he went to be checked into a hospital for something minor. This was in India, and he had to fill out a form. And on the form, you know, they asked the questions: Do you, uh, Have you had surgery? Yes. Have you heart problems? Yes. Do you have diabetes? Yes. Do you? And it was you know yes 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 yes. And it got to the end of the form, and the last question was. Uh, how would you uh, express your state of health? And he said, excellent. <laughs> he, was, uh, he, he really was not affected by the state of his physical health. And in the last years of his life, uh, the only way to describe his state of mind was bliss and more bliss. And whenever people were with him or came in touch with him or his last books that, that he wrote, that's what we were feeling, was just this deep uh, bliss, this lightness, this joy. And I remember uh, he had an experience some years before, maybe five, six, seven years be before his passing. He was in Florence at the time. And just in a moment, he recognized it, what is expressed by the song Brothers, which he wrote, of course, with so many, I mean, decades before, but he had a very deep experience of how we all are connected in God. 
and how God loves everyone equally. Now we know these things, but it became a very deep experience. And from that moment on, his life was just very, very blissful. His passing was uh, serene. It was just from one breath to the other. And then uh, his body remained with us in, in, in Assisi for, for various reasons, in, in our temple for about a week. And uh, the experience was extremely deep for the hundreds and hundreds of people who came to see him. Mm -hmm. so I just wanted to commend you on directing this very exquisite opportunity to have this woman go through the journey. I just thought the, the way in which the community was depicted was profound in that um, you just show the community you had this woman go through and experience it herself and experience the 